Ah, oh, I can hear all the the liquid moving in my lips. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are good. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing something really different that I've never done before. I'm doing a QA. Woo! I'm doing a I'm doing a QA today. Um so I asked you guys to send in some questions about myself, about anything you want to know. So, and you guys have responded quite well actually. So I've got these questions up here on my phone and yeah so i just decided to do this kind of like chilled video today because my last two videos have been you know talking at you and encouraging you and all that stuff i know you guys like that but yeah i just wanted to you know take a break from that and to, to show you guys the real me you go see the real <laughs> ah you go see the real me you go see the real me Let's see the moment. So let's just get on with it. So first question is when and how did you get saved? Okay, so I don't actually exactly remember when, but I remember how. So it was at my church, and then my dad did an altar call for the for the young children, and then we gave our lives. And then, but I guess even after that, I was, you know, some, some next up Christian family. <laughs> Don't know what I was doing in my life. But, um, I guess I'd say my seriousness in my spirituality came after I was baptised, which was in July. Okay, question two. What is your favourite thing to do when you're bored? Um, okay, this is quite easy. What I do when I'm bored is sing, make noise, I dance, eat. Eating is what I do when I'm bored. So I don't eat because I'm hungry. I eat because if there's nothing to do in the house, I will eat. I will just I will just eat. Um so yeah, sing, dance, blast the music. And this is most, mostly when I'm home alone. Even when I'm not home alone, I'll be blasting music and scream that shouting. My the family have they're used to the nonsense that I do, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the hell. <laughs> that's what I do when I'm bored. Yeah. Number three. Do you find it hard to make a good Christian friend? It was hard in secondary school, but now not so much. And in sixth form, it was e sixth form. There's so many, like, serious Christians at school that I was so happy about because that's what I was scared about. Because, like, during the summer, I completely switched. I was always, I was always, um, a very faithful girl. Like, I was always talking about Christ. I always, like, prioritised my relationship with God anyways. But, when I got into, I thought that, get, get, I can't speak English. I thought that when I was going to go into sixth form, it was going to be even harder. Because there was going to be some next people who were going to find me weird for being the way i was but there's so many god-fearing um people in my sixth form shout out to you lots um and i'm loving it i'm loving the revival that's going on in my school so i'm meeting a lot of um christian people that are together with me on this walk whom i love and cherish with all my heart because if you are new in this god thing and you don't have christian friends you also have you go so far, I'm telling you. You go so far, Shai. You go so far. <laughs> Next question. <clears throat> Were you the only Christian girl that had a strong passion for God at your school? At my secondary school? Yes. At secondary school, yes. Very much so. Sixth form, as I said, no. There's a lot. There's a lot of us, actually. And I'm, and I'm loving it because it's um removing the anxiety and fear that i have about talking to others about christ because some of my friends like to punch me in my head and tell me to do so so yeah okay next question 
what to expect in sixth form okay this is a different question um i don't really know because i'm only halfway through year 12 but um i'd say expect a bang in the face <laughs> when i first got into sixth form i thought it was gonna be fun and games like woo, like you know i thought yeah it was like that in the beginning like in the beginning i had so much fun like in the beginning you can kind of chill a little bit because you have time to make new friends and you're just settling in but when it gets to like the second or third month when you get to like the second or third month you're you are really in for a shock it's a shocker you say it's a shocker because yeah i i do help with social care so my course is full of coursework and exams. So it's kind of, it's not really too stressful because like we have like three exams, we have three exams and I've done two of them already this year. And then next year we have one and then another exam that's not really an exam. So for me, it's not really that much about, ah, it's it's fun! But I, I guess for the A-level students, it's kind of like that but yeah i just say you know be be strong like go into sixth form with a strong mind strong heart say i've come here to do my work i've come here to do their work their work do 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 their work yeah <laughs> go into sixth form with, with your head held high knowing that i've come here to do their work and that's it i've not come here to play like yeah be serious as well like don't be unserious because there's no there's no time for unserious messages at home okay period next does your relationship with god influence your friendships a hundred percent a hundred percent it does because i'd say I've, I've backed away from a lot of people not like i've cut people off because i don't like the idea of yeah yeah cutting you off now yeah no i don't like that i uh, I don't do that stuff because I'm too nice and I don't have that energy. If anything, if I really want to cut someone off, I'll tell someone else to do it for me. I can't. It's not in my. It's not in my my my. <laughs> it's not in my character to do that. There are people who aren't necessarily in my life like that anymore, or if they are, they're just in a distance. Do you know what I mean? Like I surround myself more with people with believers than unbelievers. I. Don't, I don't think I have any friends that are unbelievers, you know. I may have acquaintances and people that I know, but I don't think I can say that I have any friends that are um, unbelievers. So, yeah, it does influence a lot of my friendships. And it's not even a thing where I've had to do anything to the friend. I feel like it's just the fact that the Holy Spirit is in me and it just draws those who are not... It draws the darkness away because light and dark doesn't mix it doesn't like you see you see the dark and yeah, you see the lights it, can you see no i'm trying my hardest to but yeah that's my analogy to tell you so it does influence whether you like it or not it, it will influence it if those friends that say yeah let's go to the rave tomorrow let's let's go to the rave tomorrow and you're like oh i'm not really about that okay but the guys but Lamar's gonna be there, and you know that Lamar's trying to get you, though. But, like, I don't really, I'm not really feeling it. Okay, then I'm just gonna go, then. I'm gonna go. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. Like, just the things that you like to do before, you're just not gonna like to do it anymore. And then people will just eventually just retract themselves away from, from you. And it's a good thing at the end of the day because the darkness will leave and more light will come. There are more believers and more people who are new in Christ, growing in Christ to get out with you, they will join you. It's just like me. People have left, but more people have come, which is a very good thing. And I'm very happy for that. Your favorite Bible verses. This is so hard. I don't, I'm not one of them people that can pinpoint my favorite Bible verses because the Bible is just an amazing book and there's a lot of things in there that I love. Um, I always stick by Romans 8.18. I'm not even going to say it because you guys know that. Um, what else? 
Philippians 4 13 you know just just the 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 you know the general ones the general ones but there was one that I found the other day I think it was 2 Corinthians 4 10 2 Corinthians 4 10 I love that yeah I like that I like that I like that I read that last night and I was like <laughs> Yeah, that one I can say. That one is the one that I can point that can pinpoint. That is my one of my favorite ones. Advantages and disadvantages of being a PK. Come on. For those of you that don't know, PK is a pastor's kid. And <laughs> alas, I am one. So <laughs> yes, I'm your pastor, child. Um, okay, let's start with the advantages. Advantages is you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Um it does help you in your growth because you get that extra push that other people don't. There are a lot of things that people who aren't pastor's children don't know. That pastor's children do know. And then the pastor's children can teach those people who are not pastor's children about that a lifestyle. So yeah, there's a lot of things that I've learned as a pastor's child that I can go out. Like um, when me and my friends have discussions at school i can say well my dad told me that yeah <laughs> you know so i love that i love that there's a lot of unknown knowledge that other people don't know that my dad will know and he will pass it on to me and then i can tell other people um another advantage is my dad is actually a very funny person i don't know if this is just an advantage of being a pastor's kid a lot of people think pastors are boring dads and strict dads and it's all about yes wake up in the morning 5 a.m prayer time bible study is there's there's that side of it and there's also the really fun side of it those of you guys who are on my snapchat or my private story you see my dad he's a very chill guy he's a very funny guy and i've actually come to the terms of the fact that that's a lot of pastors that are very in church but very at home so yeah that's an advantage of being a pastor's child and another advantage is that people ask you a lot of things so it kind of helps you with your skills of evangelizing and preaching because people ask you a lot of questions and then you're able to answer them from what your dad has told you and advantage for me personally i love the discussions that i have with my dad um it's kind of a privilege to have someone who can like uplift you and help you in the sense of your spirituality so I have a lot of discussions with my dad about anything, about heaven and hell, about the process, about all of that stuff. And I kind of I really like that. So thanks, dad! <laughs> Disadvantage of being a pastor's child is a lot of people on your case, if someone sees you on the road, your dad will know about it. <laughs> your dad will know about it. <laughs> He'll know about it um you get judged a lot like a lot of people like to say stuff especially in the Congolese community like people like to talk so that's the disadvantage because you cannot you can't rest like people are always talking about what you were wearing that time who you were walking with that day who saw you on the bus that saturday so they just they won't let you breathe that's it and that's really nothing to do with the fact that my dad's a pastor but it's the fact that people know that i'm a pastor's daughter so yeah do you plan to host your own sermons okay i've done okay i have preached a sermon once once um two years ago that was the last time i actually preached it properly at my church um i haven't I haven't done one recently because of my anxiety and my nerves and my um but hopefully by God's grace I will be preaching again soon. I do want to but I do want to like I think that that's my calling hence why I do this but in terms of like um going around and preaching to churches as of now no I'm 16 <laughs> so I don't I don't know not yet yeah as of now me personally it's something that i'm thinking of doing but not right now but i do yeah it says do you plan i plan yeah next question 
Bible verses people should read if they ever lose faith or find themselves in a situation where they need God's guidance. Okay, this is very interesting. Off the top of my head, I can't think. I'm going to put them right here. So you can read them. But obviously, Romans 8.18, big one. Something that's gone me through a lot of situations in my life. So that one that I'd say, put, read that right now. Like, read that. And then these also. Yeah. The last question we have today is... What are your top five favorite songs? <laughs> My top five favorite songs. Okay, I don't know because this is hard. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I'm a very I love music. Music until I die. Like music is such an important part of my life and when i was you know some lukewarm christian and also now oh music is so important to me like it has gotten me through the most tough times in my life <laughs> but yeah okay let's go let's see okay number one nothing like your presence by william mcdowell tavis green and nathaniel bassey Refiner by Maverick City Music. Shandamu. Just had to put that out there because he's my favorite artist. Good. Um. <laughs> One eternity later. Eventually. Uh. I don't know. I'm gonna say. Le Roi de Roi. That's the King of Kings. But not the Tomalo Coffee version, the Elyon version, live, yeah, that. Um, Most Beautiful by um, Chandler Moore. But I'm going to say, like, the live versions, like, all the live versions that of Most Beautiful that Chandler Moore has done. So, the on the, the one, the on the, sh on the shores. <laughs> so, the one, like, on the shore. <laughs> It's called like On The Shores. It starts with On The Shores and then it ends with Most Beautiful. That one, the spontaneous worship one, that Most Beautiful, that version. Um, and Yahweh by Campus Rush. There's definitely so much more. Can I give 10? Because I just, I just think that that five is so not, that's definitely I think that that would be my top five. But Yahweh by Campus Rush would definitely move maybe three. So it goes uh okay, we're gonna go refiner. Nothing like your pre okay. Refiner by Maverick City Music. Nothing like your presence, William McDowell, Tavis Green and Nathaniel Bassi. Campus Rush, Yahweh. So Yahweh by Campus Rush. Uh Le Roi de Roi by Elio. The cover, the concert version, yeah, period. And most beautiful, the oh no, that's so not it. Most beautiful can't be last. Well, those, well, those are my top five, I'd say. But there's a lot more. Do you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do a music playlist of my favorite gospel songs, and you guys will will know why I'm struggling so much to put like 67 songs into five <laughs> so yeah i guess that's my top five okay so guys that is all the questions i have been asked so therefore this is the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys liked it and learned more about me and saw that i'm actually not serious at all i'm a really big weirdo but a widow in Christ, a widow, Nakolo, <laughs> which is the best way to be a widow is in Christ. Woo! So um, yeah, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this to your friends. Share this to your family. Post this on your Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere you want to. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye. Peace out. God bless you. Love you. Hello. How you doing? Yeah. Did you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? 
good, bro. <laughs> my nose be running in there. My nose be running. It be running though. <laughs> Why you no dancing, no dancing, no dancing? Why you no dancing? <laughs> Tout à l'eau, la libre, capon, tout à l'eau, 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 tout à l